It's 15 feet high, which is about as high as a semi-tractor trailer. It's 250 pounds and uh, it weighs the same with or without the air. The inflation process, it takes right now about 40 minutes uh, to inflate it or to deflate it. And it's always inflated into the site. And uh, there's only one. I'm Kurt Persky. I'm the artist who created the Red Ball Project. I'm a sculptor and my work is very much concerned with architectural space, with people in space, and it ranges from video work to sculptures to drawings to prints to things like Red Ball, which are public projects. Red Ball Project started as a commission uh, for Arts and Transit in St. Louis, and they basically have been one of three sites and two were sort of like Rosa Parks downtown, they were really pretty park sites. And one was a bridge sort of descending in the earth. It was a bit like a, it was just like a concrete, you know, overpass, kind of ugly. And, um, and I kept getting drawn to really what was like the armpit site, sort of the ugly site. And I ended up wanting to make a piece about why that was the site as a sculptor I was responding to and not the prettier sites. And in the end, what I realized is it was this mass, it was this form descending the earth, it was a space beneath it, and I really wanted to show it smashing something, you know, and I, so I drew this red ball underneath it, and I actually sort of laughed after I drew it, and then I was like, oh man, I, I can't, you know, and then I showed it to the curator the next day. I was like, ah, it's too easy, you know, but it was perfect, you know, and she laughed and I laughed. So they loved it in the first sight, and I was like, no, we gotta move, we gotta, and they were like, no, it's great here, and I was like, wow, oh, you know. So I got so frustrated that what I ended up doing was taking, because it was a commission, so I had earned something. And so I took that money and I basically brought the project to Barcelona. We just did it. It got some press and, um, and a curator in Sydney contacted me and was like, let's take this to Australia. And that was sort of the beginning of it. People bring all sorts of things to the project, you know. They'll maybe just be driving by and they'll see it on the street and they'll have no idea what it is or they'll hear about it through a friend. And I think all those avenues are really great. I mean, the deliberate charisma of the piece, it brings people in and, you know, if someone drives by and sees it, doesn't even know it's art, but it just is stunned, that's, you know, that's brilliant. Other people want to come up and there's this really, there's a, a magnetic thing that goes on, you know, and, and good sculpture is about, I think as much as anything about tactility, about touching. It's not just a plane. So for me, the fact that people come up, that they want to play with it, they want to jump into it, I think often people assume that that's a, that's a non-thought-out response, but actually I don't see it that way. When people are physically using their body to interact with the work, I mean, that's a that they're engaging immediately. And of course it's play, you know, I mean, I get that it's play, but playing is also sort of serious business. And so all sorts of things happen. You know, people come up, they want a photo, or they jump against it, or whatever. And, and then there's this other level of the project, which is about imagination and where it's going and imagining where it might be. And the transference of imagination that happens, that's really what the piece is about. So you're drawn in by the, you know, this big, you know, beautiful thing. But ultimately, there's this other thing that happens. You know, so people take it on, they sort of think about where it's going to go, where it could go, cities it's been to. So each, you know, in each city has a story, and then there's a story around the, the globe, sort of. And I think people connect to that. So for me, the work is sort of ultimately not about the ball. You know, it's kind of about what the ball facilitates and the energetics around it and where, it, where that takes it. I think my influence is, you know, in terms of what I see and what I, you know, act on. They, you know, they sort of like span from from architecture to other artists I love, you know, to um, to what I see on the street. I mean, ultimately, an artist's influence is so much about just what they walk, they, you know, what they think when they're walking down the street. I think what inspires me is the opportunity to to engage with the public in ways that art normally can't. When a project, you know, like Red Ball or the next thing I'm working on, which is called Arena Pod, when these things can get out there in public space and just really have a life of their own. If the Red Ball was just about me, it would be over. You know, it wouldn't be traveling. I don't force it to go anywhere. People want it. And, and that sort of natural growth, um, I think is at some level what any artist wants to see. But for me, working in public space is kind of great. I mean, there's a bunch of cliches people always say, like you have to really want it and whatever. And part of those cliches are based on, there is based on an, and a truth, which is that being an artist is difficult. 
I think that there's a lot of focus now because the art world, you know, has become this big money thing. There's a lot of focus on thinking of it more like being a star, that it's sort of like popularity, um, and it's not. It's not, it, it, might, it might bump you somewhere, but ultimately the smartest people in the room in the art world are waiting to see your work. And there's nothing worse than having worked to get yourself to a position where you have an opportunity and then you, your work itself isn't ready. So I think as a young artist, I wouldn't be too quick to run out and do all those businessy things to make whatever happen um, if you haven't spent the time on the work because ultimately that's it. It's got to be there. If you're looking to make unique work, right, you're looking to have a unique vision, you want to make work that the world has never seen before, the trickiest thing to remember, uh, to, to sort of learn over time is that that, that nugget is going to come from in you. It's not going to come from anywhere else. And it's harder than it sounds because listening to yourself and not listening to the masterwork you see in a museum or everything else is, is hard. But ultimately, the only thing that's truly unique is you.